Please welcome on stage Matis Ratke. So, um, the next showcase will be about a delicious two-stack CMS approach uh, that we implemented. Um, we had the opportunity to uh, use NEOS in an enterprise setup and to utilize it in an enterprise setup. Um, and we, in this case, are three agencies. It's NetLogix from Nuremberg, uh, Network Team from Kiel, and Sandstorm Media from Dresden. And uh, our customer was, uh, you can see it up there, One and One, uh, which is a telecommunication provider. Maybe someone knows them. Um, <laughs> so I think they count as, uh, as an enterprise uh, customer. And yeah, we had the opportunity to, to work on a portal or a, uh, a portal structure that they use to communicate with their partners. So One and One uh, uses partners and affiliates uh, to sell their products to, um, to the end customer. And I did something stupid, <laughs> obviously. Um, and for, these, uh, for this reason, they implemented seven different portals. And you can think of each portal as a channel for different Uh, for different needs. So uh, you and me, for example, could sell hosting products, and there are big electronic markets which sell the whole palette of, uh, of things that one one has to offer. And uh, for each of these has fairly different, uh, different requirements, but also uh, some overlap. So um, they, had the, uh, they had the opportunity To, to build a new system uh, for these seven portals, because these seven portals are getting a bit old by now, because um, they were developed over a fairly long time, and um, by now they are not anymore up to date. And one on one chose NEOS as the base for all content editing needs in-house. So, Every content management system that uh, is used in the future and future projects um, will be NEOS based. And so is this project. Mm. So we had uh, some challenges um, and we had to weld and forge a solution uh, with NEOS uh, that would be highly available, highly scalable, easy for the editor and to work with and uh, be as close to NEOS uh, standards as possible because Uh, one on one has an own development department uh, which should take over maintenance over the course of the years. Um, so we first started with a design phase like in uh, nearly every project and this is uh, really the, the uh, recently launched one on one hosting partner portal um, which was launched uh, at the end of last year. And I think uh, we have only two portals uh, left that, uh, that should be launched. And, uh, well, it's obviously, uh, it ob obviously worked out what we did. Um, and, well, we started with a design phase. So um, we had different, uh, different stakeholders that had different requirements and uh, opposed different requirements onto the project. And uh, one of it was that it should match the print catalogs that they, that they hand out to their customers, uh, should match the website as closely as possible. And that means we wanted to have a system that uh, allows for absolute positioning. And well, absolute positioning is a thing you can do, um, but it's not really something you want to do in a context uh, of multiple devices, because This works fairly well on a desktop. You can just uh, throw out some inline styling onto uh, some elements and be done with it. But what happens if you have this? So you have morphing devices. Um, so we had to come up with a solution that supports at least three different screen sizes. And it turned out, uh, well, you can imagine that this 
requires some kind of CSS black magic. That's, that is one part of the story. But the other part of the story is we had really, really uh, many properties in the Neos backend to allow this kind of behavior. Um, and it turned out Neos can handle that exceptionally well. Because uh, you have, this is the backend, for example, um, because you have these, uh, these tabbing interface, I hope I do it right, yeah, uh, these tabs. Those are um, added to the standard interface of Neos and uh, use, well, you can see uh, we have the width in pixels, we have uh, a horizontal alignment, we have a vertical alignment, and some offset for these alignments. And each of these uh, things, so the, the headline, this pile of money, and the box, are all placed inside of a relative context and placed over each other. other. So uh, basically, we had to create a responsive Photoshop. Um, <laughs> and the, the, uh, a few other things to notice, we have this, um, this placeholder syntax. That's uh, yeah, handlebars-like syntax, um, where the editors can define uh, user-customizable content. For example, in this case, we have first name and last name. Uh, that gets filled in by some other stage in the, uh, in the process in our two-stack CMS. I will come to that uh, in a minute. And uh, one other cool thing we use Neos for is content dimensions. Uh, we use the content dimensions to uh, differentiate between public-facing content and content that is protected uh, and only visible to locked-in users. So normally you would use content dimensions, for example, uh, to implement internationalization or uh, yeah, well, different languages. Um, and in this case, it turned out pretty handy uh, that it's not only a framework to, to do some languages, but also a framework uh, which can control different types of content. So the editing experience had to be a bit more complex than this typewriter. Um, because it should allow for a few other things, like conditional content that is only shown when the user uh, has, for example, birthday, so that you can see your present today, just this, uh, your last chance to get it, and, uh, for example, to, to run some media campaigns. And uh, we had to import a newsletter, for example, from other sources that... Uh, should be displayed inside of this application. And, well, there is, is tons of more stuff uh, on the front-end side that was really interesting, but um, now we come to the, to the interesting part for this conference, because uh, the main thing and the main work we had to do was the architecture. Because um, one and one decided that they didn't want a, uh, the NEOS to be public-facing. So there's no content that is directly rendered via Neos into an HTML site that you can, uh, you can get. So everything we see here is static content, this blue boxes. Um, we have the placeholders that you saw earlier. Uh, we have some Angular components that talk uh, with, an REST, with a REST API on the back end. And uh, these call, call to an Apache mod proxy, and the mod proxy just hands uh, all the requests over to a so-called Java front-end. Well, it's a bit funny that's, uh, that we call it front-end, but it's just because it's the public-facing side of our two-stack CMS. Um, that would deserve a talk of its own, <laughs> um, and I will just show you how, how we implemented it uh, inside of this architecture. So, it abstracts away uh, internal business API calls uh, that are used to field information, like these placeholders, for example. Um, so the Java front end uh, queries an API at one and one, and uh, this API returns some data that is filled in. So we enrich the content via an API. Now then we do have this PostgreSQL. Uh, that's a georedundant cluster. Uh, and in fact, the Java frontend itself is essentially stateless. Uh, so it is easy to scale over multiple uh, instances and to scale horizontally. Um, 
And now comes the part that is really interesting for the NEOS community, and that's this part down here. All the content is published into a Redis store. The Redis store is clustered over the machines and ensures that uh, the Java front end can be stateless. So how does, it, uh, how does the content get into that? Well, as you may have uh, figured by now, uh, we have a NEOS that is only reachable uh, from internal one-on-one -on -one systems, and uh, we created this job worker in process queue. Uh, that's basically an asynchronous job that uh, publishes all the content nodes as key value, uh, as key value store or into this key value store as keys and values. Uh, so you can, uh, you can query later on from this store. And this is automatically published to all the, all the nodes that uh, use this Redis. And that's quite cool, because uh, you don't have to rely on, on the rendering engine of Neos, but uh, can do anything with the content later on. And what's awesome about it is that we didn't have to touch any other part of the NEOS core. So everything you see here is basically a standard NEOS setup. And everyone trained at one and one, uh, one, and one to uh, do some content work can use the setup instantly, almost instantly, because there are really a lot of uh, custom, uh, custom custom components uh, that require some training, but nevertheless. In the end, it's just a, um, a basic Neo setup. So, um, and that's what it is in the end. Ha, my cheesy animation. Um, we didn't have to force Neos. Uh, as I said in the beginning, we didn't have to forge it. We didn't have to weld it. It just fell into place for the most part. Um, we could just use the standard parts to create a really highly scalable and uh, huge, uh, highly available system without uh, putting too much effort into uh, optimizing NEOS itself. So we just uh, extended it, and it sho really showed the flexibility of the whole application. And uh, that's one thing I think in the, in the spirit of the inspiring conference uh, we can take from it, because uh, I would like to see this approach extend, for example, for a super flashy static site generator based on NEOS, uh, or some other use cases. Uh, maybe you have better ideas than me. Um, and it was a really pleasant experience to, to work with it and to integrate it uh, in this setup. Um, and I'm, as you can see here, not a core member uh, of NEOS, so I take the opportunity to thank the core members because when they do it themselves, it's uh, maybe a little... <laughs> well, um, <laughs> thank you for all your dedication and effort that went into this, uh, this project to make, it, uh, to make it happen and to make it so pleasure, uh, pleasurable for project managers like me <laughs> uh, to get really cool projects uh, done in time. That's really awesome. And thank, uh, thank you for, the, uh, for one and one that they allowed us to showcase this application because I think it's really cool and uh, we have, uh, have learned a lot on the way. So if you have any other questions, everything that is labeled with network team uh, might be something I'm near at. So uh, if you want to reach out, just, uh, just come to me and uh, you can also talk to Christopher Lubeck uh, about this. He knows a whole lot more about the correct architecture and the uh, implementation details uh, as I'm just the front-end guy that was talked about uh, sometime today. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you. So, thank you very much for these cool showcases. Um, we have um, informations for you, important informations regarding the party tonight. Um, unfortunately, uh, 